you family. I'm out for a run today in Portugal. I'm falling in love with this country. I'm in this wine area. You can see behind me all these vineyards, fields that just stretch forever and ever. But I love, I rounded a corner and there's this huge eucalyptus grove that was left standing or just grew this way in a perfect square. You can see it behind me. And they carved a path right through the center of it. How gorgeous is that? And I want to do a meditation here for you. Just a five minute meditation. It's such a beautiful, incredible natural space that I think, what a spot to just give you five minutes of delicious, soul regenerating breath and space. Let's do it. How amazing are these colors? There's no filter on my camera. It's this neon green all the way up to the sky. So I'm gonna sit down in the dirt so you don't have to. <laughs> so you can sit down in the, in the soil, in the dirt of your own soul, of this space that we're gonna create together. I'm so inspired by this eucalyptus grove that I happened upon today and it's making me think a lot of life-giving thoughts that I want to share with you. So this is the first time I've done this, not planned, um, in my neon shorts out for a run, but I just want to take a moment with you, a five-minute-ish meditation to bring some space into your day, to bring some possibility, to bring some life. So let's do it. Let's, let's try this out. Wherever you are, take a seat, take a comfortable seat. That could mean sitting up against a wall. It could mean just sitting with your legs crossed. And you might want to um, bring the fingers of your, your thumb and your forefinger together. I think of it as closing the circuit of energy of my body when I sit down to be intentional about breath and prayer and um, breathing life and breathing vision into my day, which is what I hope this will be. So you might want to bring your thumb and your forefinger together, just resting onto your knees in this old posture of attentiveness, this ancient, ancient wisdom of the body. Think about rooting your sit bones down into wherever you're seated, into the ground, grounding yourself and creating length in your spine, almost like almost like you're breathing into the spaces between the vertebra and your spine and as though your head is going to break into the clouds. So much length, so much space and all of a sudden the shoulders start to release. Maybe you bring one ear to one shoulder and through center and the other side and roll forward and roll back around. And do that a few times until your neck feels free or more free than when you started. All of the ancient practices and postures of yoga, I think of yoga in the broadest sense of movement, of intentional movement, movement that brings life, um, is about bringing your heart and your mind to a place of being able to pray and meditate. That's what, that's what the ancients have have always thought that the actual purpose of yoga was not you know really amazing impressive postures and muscles but um, but was to free the body of tension and stress and to bring the body to a new place to bring body and mind to a new place of openness so let's try to get there together today as much as we can just through these small movements and start to breathe inhale through the nose and out through the nose. Think about inflating your lungs, but even beyond your lungs, your core, your abdomen, your pelvis, with breath, with space, and controlled slowly exhaling that. It might help to use a count, a four count of one, inhale two, inhale three, inhale four, and then maybe hold for four, three, two, one and exhale four three two one that four count might help you just find a rhythm for your breath maybe you hold maybe you don't hold 
but just start to create that space, that quietness and feel your heart settle, feel your nervous system, settle, feel your adrenal system, stabilize. We're gonna believe together for a few minutes that it's gonna be okay, that we can create the safety net and even beyond that, the possibility and creativity that our souls are calling for. So where I wanna to go today for just a moment in our souls and our hearts, where this amazing grove of eucalyptus is, is calling me is this space that I just happened upon. It's not really clear if um, it was left, if it maybe spanned a whole mountainside or um, if it was just the space that it is now um, and was left standing or if it grew as, as this kind of perfect square and there's a path cut through it. It's reminding me of, it's astonishing and it's beauty and it's symmetry and it's smell and the sounds of the birds that are called here, that feel pulled here. And it's reminding me of how much beauty is all over the world in such abundance, in such excessiveness that we have never even seen, that we can't imagine, we can't imagine how much there is. So let's go there together for a minute. The neon fish at the very bottom of the ocean, so deep that camera equipment can't really get there. Um, the shades of coral we haven't even seen the incredible color, the incredible, excessive, creative life. Flowers we haven't seen, we can't imagine, that burst out in Antarctica, in the tundra of Russia, in fields and valleys that are tucked into mountain ranges all over the world that no human will ever see flowers that, that bloom for a season that is so short, no human will ever see that they are there for the glory of God, that they're there for the delight of God, they're there for um, the, sheer, the sheer abundance of themselves. We can think about life in the rainforest around the world species that have not even been discovered yet, of insects with um, iridescent wings, um, of color patterns that are so microscopic that we can't, we haven't seen them yet, we can't even imagine them. And for a few moments of breath, let your mind just wander where it wanders to all of this excessive, abundant beauty and life that we haven't yet seen, that we can't even yet imagine. And then I want you to bring to mind, bring to heart a circumstance in your life that feels dead-ended, that feels stale, that feels deathly to yourself, soul-crushing, um, that, that feels impossible. Go there also, in your breath, in your prayers. Really drop into it and feel the pain of it, feel the impossibility of it. And then come back to this universe of life and possibility and beauty and abundance. And see if with breath and prayer you can bring these two into each other. 
these two worlds, these two realities, to let them co-mingle, to let them permeate each other. The reality of how much life and beauty and excess and abundance this world offers us and the, the deadness and impossibility of the circumstances and situations that we can find ourselves in. And hold that space, hold that, hold that impossible tension. You can hold that impossible tension. And with your breath and in the freedom of your body, let these two worlds inform each other and fertilize, cross-fertilize each other. Allow yourself to believe, to pray, to hope for the impossibility of more life, of the kind of abundance that we see, that we are witnesses to being a reality, coming into those spaces in our lives that feel impossible. You might want to hold your hands open. You might want to hold one hand open and one hand over your heart or over your belly where you carry that tension and that anxiety about these impossible circumstances. And just let your body hold itself open to what God might do, to what the world could conspire to bring life into just hold hold there a few more breaths and as you do dare the possibility of holding that space in your life of holding that hope for life of being yourself a vessel of creativity and openness and generosity within the impossible conflicts that we can find ourselves in. A few more breaths, settle into that new space that you've created today. The light in me, the risky hope in me, the daring hope in me, greets all the same in you, honors all the same in you. Namaste.